Masechet Sota Daf He. We have a long series of agadot about arrogance. As Haraligaseha Ruach Minain. Where can we find a warning of a prohibition against being haughty? Amar Rava, Amar Zairi, Shimu Vehazinu Al Tigbahu. From this pasuk in Yirmiya, it says here and give ear, be not proud because Hashem has spoken. So that's pretty explicit. Al Tigbahu. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Amar Mehacha, Veram Lebabecha Veshachachta, Uchti Visham Elecha, Pen Tishkach Et Hashem Elokecha. Two pasukim in Devarim chapter 8 that say, um, if you are high and mighty, then be careful because then you will come to forget Hashem. Um, uh, well, someone who's humble in spirit and who needs something, so he's going to call out and pray and feel gratitude. Uh, whereas someone who thinks so highly of himself, he says, oh, I don't need anybody else and therefore forgets his creator. And uh, similarly, also in Devarim, it says, be careful lest you forget Hashem, Elo- Hashem who did all good things for you. So there you go. That's another explicit, it's not just advice. It's not just, uh, you know, try. It's an actual language of a prohibition. And this fulfills the very Various words that Rabbi Abin said. Whenever you find in the in the in the in the Torah that it says the words pen, less don't do that, don't do this because it may. And here you have the word pen or al, don't um, or he shamed, be careful. So um, uh, so these are all words that tell, tell that tell you this is a an official law. It's a law taase. You're not allowed to be arrogant. All right. This is not just a musar shmuz. It's an actual prohibition. Darash Rav Avira. Zimnin Amara Mishemla Mishemet de Rav Asi. Zimnin Amara Mishemet de Rav Ame. Koma Kol Adam Shiesh Bo Gasu Taruach Lesof Mit Maet Shnemar Romu Meat. So this is a derasha Rav Avira would say sometimes in the name of Rav Ase, sometimes in the name of Rav Ame. Anyone who has haughtiness of spirit in the end will be brought down low. As it says in the Pasuk, here's the Pasuk in context. Romo me'at ve'enenu. Someone might be exalted for a while, but eventually, but you see, come back and come back soon and they're gone. Uh, it's a, a, any kind of power or, uh, um, or uh, uh, self, uh, uh, self-worth that a person has that's uh, exaggerated is uh, appears for only for a short time and some the, those people who are haughty will be brought low and shrivel up kakol like all do and they'll wither like heads of grain right everybody at what comes up must go down everybody has the same ending you can't take your power and your money with you um, and so therefore those things are not important so here we see so if someone is high it's only going to be for a short time and maybe you say all right maybe they will they'll be high for a short time but when they're brought low they'll still be around they'll still have something no and then no they're going to be gone totally um, so someone who is haughty will end up being falling so far that they will they will wither away. They will be gone. Whereas if a person is haughty, but he makes teshuva, he recognizes it and he humbles himself, then that person will not be will not die before his time and be gone, but rather will be gathered in his right time, right after a nice long old age, like Avraham Avinu, um, because the same Pasuk that we just read says, he will um, be, uh, um, he will be gathered like all. Um, so what does it mean, like all? Like Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, regarding whom it says, Bakol, it says, Avraham, Berach, et Avraham, Bakol, with everything. The word Mikol is said regarding Yitzhak. The word Kol is said, said regarding a, a, a blessing to Yaakov. This is uh, very important. This is what we say in Birkat Mazon. 
Hashem should bless us. Bakol, mikol, kol. What does that mean? It sounds like nonsense. What do you mean? Uh, with in everything, from everything, everything. So this is a reference to this exact agada that we're um, right, uh, like we like like Hashem, like you blessed. Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, Bakol, mikol, kol. Each one of them had one of those words, and so kol means they had a full life. Uh, they had uh, they had uh, children. They had they were satiated in their days. They had success. So that's the greatest blessing um, if someone makes Teshubah. But if not, if a person does not repent, uh, then they will wither like the tops of husks. Uh, here is a uh, stalk of wheat and the tops. We're going to talk about what that means in a second. Right here is the husks and here's these tops um, that stick out. My kedosh shibolet. What does that mean? That they're going to wither like the top of a husk. Rav Huna and Rav Chista. Chad Amar kisasa de shibol. Tav Chad Amar keshibolet asma. One opinion says that this is like the on, right? That's those those top green things. And others say like the uh, husks themselves. I understand the one who says the on, uh, though that those um, uh, uh, those growths on top. That's why it says the head of the shibolet. So that's because it's all the way on top. But if you say it's talking about the husks themselves, why would that be called the head of the husks? For example, someone comes to a field and he's going to be harvesting the field. What does he start with? The, 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 the stalks that grow the tallest, that's what he cuts first. The point is, the taller some, someone is, the sooner they will be cut down, right? The higher they are, the faster they fall. And now another pasuk in Yeshaya um, that says, Hashem says, I uh, uh, dwell in a holy and high place. And also Hashem dwells within him, with him that who is contrite and of humble spirit. Um, so it says here ve'et daka. The et is just a particle that uh, uh, is introducing an obje- uh, a um, the object of a verb. Um, but the rabbis here in the derasha, the derasha is actually very close to the peshat. You hardly even need the derasha. It says Hashem is going to dwell with. Um, even though Hashem is high up, He's going to dwell with those who are hum, uh, who are uh, daka, who are crushed down and lowly of spirit. But the question is, if Hashem is dwelling with them, which way does it go? One opinion says, iti daka. Hashem takes the daka who's low down and brings him up to where Hashem is up in you know, up in heaven. Not literally, right? But Hashem is exalted, and so um, He will raise up the poor and uh, the uh, the humble to be exalted. Whereas another opinion says, "No, ani etake." Hashem says, "I will humble myself down and be all the way down there um, to be like the li- like the person who is contrite." Right? Hashem will humble Himself. Right? So, like you know, if a king comes to uh, to cheer someone up, does he invite the other person to come sit on a big throne? Right, with him, so, so now you're cheered up, you're sitting next to me on the big uh, throne, big table, that's one way to do it. Or if the king comes and the person is uh, sitting, he's mourning, and the king sits on the floor and humbles with the person, that also will make the person feel um, that someone cares for him, feel better. It makes more sense to say the second opinion that Hashem is the one that comes down to the level of a humble person. Uh, as we say, because um, uh, uh, after all, HaKadosh Baruch Hu um, left for all the other mountains and hills and only brought his Shekhinah down on Har Sinai um, and not on, and he didn't bring Har Sinai up to heaven, right? right? It says, Vayered. God came down to 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 the mountain. Amadav Yosef Olam Yilmad Adam Midat Kono. Shadei Hakadosh Baruch Hu Hinia Kol Ari Mugvot Vishra Shechinato Al Har Sinai Vinia Kol Ilanot Tovot Vishra Shechinato Basene. And not only did God come down to a mountain, not bring a mountain up to himself, but which mountain did he choose? Rav Yosef teaches a person should always learn from 
the the understanding of his creator, the decision of his creator. Baruch Baruch Hu, he um, disregarded all the other mountains and hills, and he had his Shekhinah come down on Har Sinai, a low mountain, the lowest of the mountains. And even though there's many big, tall cedar trees, palm trees, how oh, he left all of those, and he came down to a small, humble bush, right, to show that. Hashem is even more, right, than, than anything high and haughty. Hashem's presence is felt the most in that, in that which is humble. And that was all um, a, a lesson that uh, someone who is high and mighty, he thinks he's going to be closer to God. He's gonna, he, thinks he, can, he thinks he can be like God. It's the opposite. Hashem is not with the high and mighty, not the trees, not the mountains, and not the people, but rather with he who is low and contrite in spirit. Rabbi Elazar says, anyone who has uh, uh, arrogance within him, it's worthy to cut that person down like an Asherah tree. Why? It says the same words. Those who are high up uh, of, uh, um, of stature, um gidoim uh, shall be hewn down pasuk in yeshaya and it says the same word gidoim to gadeon regarding asherah trees you got to cut them down so um this uh, arrogance is a form of idolatry we saw that equation yesterday kind of self worship Anyone who has is, is arrogant, that person's dust, their remains after they die, um, ninad, uh, and afaron ninad will not stir during the time of Tichet Metim, they're not coming back. As it says, um, Pasuk in Yeshaya, awake and sing for joy those who dwell in dust. The simple reading is those who dwell in dust, meaning those who are dead and buried and turned to dust, they will awake and sing for joy at the future redemption. But it doesn't say shochene be'afad, those who dwell in dust, but rather simply shochene afad. This refers to those who are, who dwell in the dust during their lifetimes when they they don't make themselves so important they say who what am i but dust and ashes i don't, i don't feel anything coming uh, coming to me i'm not self entitled so if a person is um is humble um like dust now in this world then they have a right and merit to awake and sing for joy. Amar Rabbi El Azar, Kol Adam Sheyesh Bo Gasu Taruach, Shechina Miyaledet Adav Shenemar VeGabo Ami Merchak Yi Yeda. Any person who has arrogance, the Shechina wails over him, as it says, Gabo the Hori Mimerchak. Uh, from afar, God, God uh, uh, is uh, uh, pains for him, uh, wails over him. Right? Woe to that person who does he, who does he think he is? So Rav Avira gave a derasha. And you imagine these probably were in fact, well, the word derasha could mean has two meanings. Either that he's expounding, explaining a pasuk, or he's teaching in public. In this case, it's probably both. He says, come and look, look at the, the way of Hashem as it contrasts, how it contrasts with the way of flesh and blood. In the way of flesh and blood, someone who is elevated can only see that which is elevated. Maybe literally, if you're high up, you can see things that are high up. Um, or, uh, more, uh, uh, or, or in terms of stature, usually someone who is very powerful or very rich, they only, get, they only uh, uh, socialize with people who are, who are also of that higher stature and they don't take uh, they don't take notice of uh, people who are in the lower class however HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not so even though Hashem there's no being more exalted than Hashem, than Hashem but even so and precisely what makes him so exalted and so great is that he sees those who are low down and so uh, the greater a person is really the more they should emulate 
their creator and uh, take care uh, to uh, to know and care for those who are beneath them. Amar Rav Chista, v'yitem amor ukva, kol adam sheyesh bo gasut haruach, amar kadosh baruchu, en ani vehu yecholin nadur ba'olam. Shneemar, me loshni baseter re'ehu, oto asmit keba enayim burchav levav, oto lo uchal. So Rav Chista said, any person who has arrogance, God says, I, he and I cannot live in the same world, right? There's not room for two of us. He takes up so much space um, and thinks he's the center of the universe, so it's me or him. Well, you know who's going to win in that case. Um, as it says in Tehillim, he who uh, slanders his neighbor in secret, right? um, he, that person, Hashem says, I will destroy. Um, someone who is haughty of his eyes, he's always kind of looking from up to down, descend, condescending over people and proud of heart, God says, I cannot bear him. Now, what does that mean? Um, Not, don't read it, that I cannot bear him, but rather with him, I cannot be, right? There's, not, there's no room for both of us. Some apply that that ending also to the beginning of the Pasuk. Not only someone who is haughty, but also someone who slanders his neighbor uh, in secret. That also, and they go together. Someone who thinks he's so great, he thinks, oh, he, he puts other people down. In fact, the reason he thinks he's so great is because he has to put other people down to make himself great because he actually probably is not so great. A person who has arrogance, even a slight wind disturbs him. This is true. Someone who has self-confidence is humble, right? And knows and you know, knows his, his self-worth and is confident in himself, doesn't need other people to uh to to praise him, and it doesn't need to put down other people in order to raise himself up. And so, right, the more arrogant a person is, uh, the more even a small thing is going to bother him, like Haman, right? He's second in charge. Everybody's bad. One person doesn't bow down to him. He can't take it because, right, really uh, arrogant people are usually actually quite sensitive and can't take a joke and um, are, are, you know, become, become uh, um, easily insulted. Um, so we learn this because Pasuk in Yeshaya says, the wicked are like the troubled sea, um, in what ways like that? Are they like that? Right, so look at the entire sea. How many Revi'its of water are in the sea? Millions. And yet a little wind comes and makes ripples in the sea and can push it, right? A little wind can even push a giant uh, a giant ocean. All the more so a human being who has only one rivi'it of blood, um, so a little wind will come and destroy it. Uh, we actually have more than the rivi'it of blood, and that's obvious, so uh, everybody knew that. Could be talking about the minimum amount of blood that an infant has, or uh, another interesting interpretation is that the heart pumps every time it beats, it pumps about a rivi'it of blood. So a rivi'it is the life force. That's how much blood you need to constantly be pumping to stay alive. And so a person who is much has much less liquid than the ocean, if the ocean can disturb uh, the whole, o the, can, can, if a wind can, can disturb the whole ocean, certainly it disturbs um, a human being, and the more arrogant they are, the more it disturbs them. Um, so Rav Chia, in the name of Rav, says that a Tamid Chacham, a Torah sage, must have a little bit of arrogance. Not a lot, just a, an eighth of an eighth, one sixty-fourth of arrogance. Why? Isn't arrogance bad? Yeah, but to protect the honor of the Torah, right? If someone's, uh, you know, insulting or making fun uh, of uh, Tamid Chacham, and then he doesn't answer back, doesn't do anything, well, yeah, that's a positive trait in one sense. On the other hand, because he represents Torah, so he should have a little bit 
of arrogance. Okay, uh, I know some uh, some people who are very machmir on this. Just kidding. Okay, and Rav Huna, the son of Rav, Rav Yoshua, supports the previous statement and says that little bit of arrogance or honor that a, uh, a sage has is like a crown, crowns him like the on of the husks. The one that we refer we referred to just a few minutes ago that we said that on will be cut down was negative. But for a Torah scholar, um, this uh, little bit of arrogance can be a crown. Rava is more ambivalent about this. And he says, someone who has such arrogance deserves excommunication. And someone who doesn't have it also is going to get excommunication. In other words, there's no two ways about it, right? The balance has to be so perfect that, you know, if someone is... Too, uh, uh, too unassuming, uh, too uh, self-deprecating. Uh, that's that's not not a good extreme. But if someone has even the slightest amount of too much uh, self-importance or arrogance, that also leads to disaster. Um, so, but to have a tiniest bit, right? One sixty-fourth is like the tiniest bit that you can even count. Um, that. Uh, has some positive positive value according to these three statements. On the other hand, we have an opposing opinion. He says, no, uh, Torah scholars should not have, not it and not any part of it, zero parts of uh, arrogance, right? Is it a small matter that the Pasuk says everyone that is proud of heart is an abomination? If something is an abomination, then you don't want any of it, right? Uh, um, uh, stealing is abomination. You don't steal just a little bit. Avodah's abomination. You don't have it just a little bit, right? He says absolutely zero. Amar Chizkiya. En tefilato shel adam nishmat elam ken mesim libo ke basar shenemar vayam ide chodesh pechotcho vechule yavo kol basar lishtachavot. A person's prayers are not heard unless a person makes his heart like flesh and blood. In other words, not haughty of spirit, but rather remembers that all we are are is just made out of uh, flesh and bones. Um, as the Pasuk says, um, uh, when it came on the new moon, from one Shabbat to another, all flesh will come, Yeshaya says, in the future, and uh, and uh, worship before Hashem. But it calls the people that come to worship, doesn't just call them people, it calls them kol basad, that the proper way to approach Hashem in prayer is remembering we are mere flesh. Amar Rabbi Zera, Basar keti be venirpa, Adam lo keti be venirpa. Concerning flesh, it says um, in the pasuk. This is um, regarding skin, uh, skin diseases, boils. Let's look at the pasuk inside a second, right? When it so talks about nega sarat ki ye be Adam veubala kohen, when it talks about some kind of affliction that that comes to an Adam, then he has to bring it to a kohen to check it out. It doesn't say the word that he will be healed. Whereas in a few pasukim later it says ubasar ki ye bo be aro shechin venirpa regarding basad and it has some kind of disease discoloring so then there it says healed uh it will heal so the point is if a person approaches hashem as an adam saying oh look how important i am right then they will not get healing whereas if a person comes in prayer um as basad i am mere flesh and bones right i am not important then he will be deserving of uh, healing. All right, very nice derasha. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Adam efer dam mara basar busha seduchari ma ikadam resheo dechti be beshin. Okay, here according to Yochanan, both the word Adam and the word basar both imply the humility of a person, the lowly aspects of him, and so Adam is rashe tevot. Um, efer, dust, tam, blood, mara, bile. Uh, that's the different, the bile was the different um, uh, hormones and, and liquids that are in a person that um, make them, uh, that a person needs the right uh, balance of them to be healthy. All right, that's all we are, um, flesh and blood and some some liquids and dust. Okay, basar is rashe tevot, busha, sirucha, rima, uh, shame, putrid, worm, right? We are shame in our in our life. We turn into worms, 
after we go, right? So who is anybody to be uh, uh, to be so self-absorbed and think they're so great? Or others say that the the sheen here that makes it as like a samech because it sounds the same basad and samech. But others say no, keep it, leave it as as a sheen and read the sheen as a sheen instead. Keep the shape of the letter, and that stands for Sheol, right? What well, a person is just embarrassment, and they go to Sheol, right? Who should be arrogant? Amar Kol adam sheyesh Anyone who has arrogance will be diminished. Sheneemar velaset velasapachat and seet el alishon gavoa. Because regarding in the in the section regarding sarat, so the Torah uses two words for some kind of a disease, either set a sore or a scab. Um, but we're reading this now uh, figuratively. That set is not referring to a, a sore. Um, a you know a discoloration, but rather seet from the language of being too high. Anyone who thinks of themselves too highly will be brought down by having this disease, right? And now let's see when you're all itchy and you can't be seen in public and shamed. Let's see how haughty you are. Right here in Yeshua, it says the word nisaot is referring to something high up, like mountains and hills. Um, uh, and the word sapachat also is referring to those who are in need and are only secondary. Um, right? Sapachat um, means an appendage, something that is dependent on something else. Um, as it says, this is um, the curse given to the sons of Eli. Now, the, now Eli and the sons are the Kohanim Gedolim. They're in charge of everything. But they're going to be brought low. They're going to be kicked out to the extent that in the future, the descendants of uh, Eli are going to go to the future Kohen Gadol, not there, not them, and say, please, can you make me an appendage to one of the families of the Kohanim so that I can eat some of the, the holy bread? They're going to be so kicked out that they're going to just beg to be even be a, a secondary part, um, and so uh, that's precisely because they, those sons of Eli, they were thinking of themselves as so haughty. Everything's coming to them, abusing people, and so they will be brought low. Come see, teaches um, how uh, how the how those who are great um, sorry how great those who are lowly in spirit uh, appear before Hakadosh Baruch Hu. right? So so what what's the benefit of being humble? Well, you see, when there was a Bet Mikdash, a person could bring an Olah, and he would have the merit that he brought an Olah. If he brought a meal offering, so he has a merit that he brought a meal offering. However, someone who has is is uh, lowly of spirit and humble. The Torah, uh, or the, the the scripture, uh, considers it as if he sacrificed every single type of korban, as as it says zibche in plural. All the sacrifices that we give to Hashem, you know what that's equal to a ruach nishpada, a broken spirit, and that's something that you don't need a bet mikdash for. You can have a broken spirit anytime, anywhere. You can come before a kadosh baruch Hu in humility and dependence and gratitude, and that is equivalent to every korban all put together. And not only that, a person's tefillah when they pray in such a in such a way. Uh, will not be rejected uh, because uh, the the continuation of the pasuk says a, a broken and contrite heart Hashem will never despise, will never ignore. Also teaches, right? He's a, he was also taught the previous one. Anyone who estimates or appraises 
um, the, his ways in this world, right? He thinks about all his ways, were this good? Should I do more of this? Should I do less of that? Um, if a person is so careful with his uh, deeds, then he will merit to see the salvation that a Kadosh Baruch Hu will bring. As the Pasuk says, the Pasuk now is actually with a scene, right? Uh, to him that orders his way aright, he places a good, a good road. Um, he will, uh, I, I, Hashem will show that person salvation, right? If you prepare your, your directions, then you know you're going to get to your destination. And the, and the Midrash says, don't read it for Sam, but rather Sham, meaning to appraise, one who appraises his ways, judges that judges everything he does, um, will, um, will merit the redemption. So we end this series of Agadot on a happy note, right? Although there's a lot of um, uh, fearful passages and, and warnings um, about the, the dangers of haughtiness being like Abu Dazarab, the fundamental cause of, uh, of, uh, of the misdeeds. Um, but there is hope for one who is contrite and can make teshuva. All right, really very beautiful and very important series of Agadot. And now we go back to the Halacha. Kesad Mekanel Ad Mishnah Est. What does, how do you do the warning, right? Exactly what do you say? And so the Mishnah gave an example, but the example that it brought was self-contradictory, as we saw. So when it said kesad, what's an example? And it said, if a husband tells his wife, do not speak to Mr. Cohen. Um, so it sounds like the the um, the uh, warning is, is supposed to be about speaking, and that would there consequently in parallel if she does uh, go ahead and she speaks to him, right? They have a conversation, and someone sees them, uh, witnesses see. Oh, I saw he had a conversation. So the warning and the sitira means speaking. So it sounds like uh, having a conversation is the problem. But then the very next line says, if she went after that warning and she had a conversation with, with that guy, nevertheless, she's permitted to be with her husband. She's permitted to eat teruma if he's a Kohen and she is not. It's meaning they're still fully married, nothing, nothing wrong, which means that speaking is not the problem. And therefore the warning and the sitira is not about speaking, but rather about f being physically secluded in one room together. And so the warning um, uh, and, uh, and seclusion have to be that. But the Mishnah is not very clear because it gives an example of warning about speaking. So we think the, the whole problem of warning and seclusion is about speaking, but then it's, it follows up and said, if she only speaks to him, that's okay. So is it is speaking what what we're talking about or physical seclusion says no, you have to fill in the, the Mishnah. It's just giving you like a couple of examples, but you have to fill in all the all the cases. If the warning was don't speak to him, that's not a sufficient warning, right? Sometimes in the Mishnah it says kesad, and then it gives an example of what it's what's not a, a negative example, right? What's not the case. So if the warning is only don't speak and she speaks to him or he, the husband says don't speak to him and she's secluded with him, even though, she, that, that's, even though seclusion is the main thing, but that warning doesn't count. The warning has to be don't be secluded with him. So if she said, if the husband says, If he gave a proper warning, that's the second case of the Mishnah, right? Assuming she had a proper warning, she had a proper warning, don't seclude, but she didn't seclude herself, she just spoke to him. Then also, that's not called setira. She's still permitted. However, if she is, uh, if she's warned, don't be secluded with him, and she goes and she is secluded with him, the amount of time that it would take for them to do an act of sin, on, then and only then is she prohibited to her home, uh, uh, meaning to her husband, and she cannot eat teruma if she's married, if she is a bat Yisrael married to a kohen. Baruch Adonai Amen ve